Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Hello, brothers and sisters. I hope I found you well. And I also hope you're enjoying Points of Light Radio so far. I know I'm enjoying taking this journey with you. But in today's segment, I've decided to take a tactical pause, shall we say, to reflect on the segments and the guests that I've brought you so far. Did you like Alex Powers? How about David Greggs or Davy Wiggers? I know I'm not done with the Odd Fells or the Knights of Pythias. I have another guest I've been in touch with that I'll speak to from the Knights of Pythias. And I hope to feature more people from the Odd Fells and the appendant bodies thereof. On a personal level, I still have a few questions that I'm asking here. As I said, some of my questions have been answered, but some haven't. To start with, some people complain about the secrecy of these fraternal organizations. All families have secrets, right? I think we should let these fraternal organizations keep theirs. Uh, There are people that complain that not everybody can attend lodge meetings. Well, do you just let anyone from off the street wander into your family functions? Right? I think some of that's understandable. Uh, Some say that the rituals and symbols of these fraternal organizations are pagan. But let's be honest, we do that for many things in our societies, even though even in our society, even though that we, even though even those of us who don't belong to any religious or fraternal organizations. Prime example is Christmas and Easter. If you've studied the history of Christmas, its origins stem from both pagan and Roman cultures. On December 25th, the Romans celebrated the birth birth of Mithra, their sun god, and they celebrated it with drunken parties. Some of that does sound familiar, doesn't it? (laughs) Uh, The naming of the celebration of Easter seems to go back to the name of the pre-Christian goddess in England, Yolster. I hope I pronounced that right. Eoster was celebrated at the beginning of the spring. I personally celebrate those two holidays as the birth and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I allow the pagans to celebrate them any way they want. But if, you know, let's ask ourselves, if these two holidays can be celebrated as Christians, as, as Christian, why can't other symbols be viewed differently or why not but there are some other things that still leave me wondering why don't other fraternal organizations wear rings and have card decals the way the freemasons do i mean the freemasons are very open that way they will i've seen so many Freemasons wearing their rings and having decals on their cars, but I don't see that with, for instance, the fraternal organization, the fraternal order of Eagles or the fraternal order of Elks and so on. I've seen their rings around, but most of their members, I don't even don't remember seeing them wearing those. The Masons are known for secrecy. You know, you hear this all the time, but I found when I had my guest Alex Powers, and there are some other ones I've interviewed that I will be 
uh, bringing to you later, I found Freemasons can be very upfront and open. Right? On the other hand, many of the other non-Masonic organizations I've approached for interviews have been cagey to the point of hostile. I mean, I'd love to visit to feature some someone from the Fraternal Order of the Organization. Fraternal Order of Eagles, the Moose or the Grange, but I've had the phone slammed down in my ear by some of those organizations, literally slammed down in my ear. Uh, would a little more openness help going forward? And the Masons, as I've said, have been very open with me, but also I've noticed with the public. Uh, some Masonic lodges have family functions, Right? and open their lodges up, almost like have open house days and stuff like that for non-members. I know that in Heritage Park in Calgary, Alberta, they have a model Masonic Lodge open to the public. So why don't other fraternal organizations have similar lodges? And why don't, like I said, why do these other lodges not have open houses? I'd also like to know the percentage of these of people who belong to these fraternities who have it run in their family. I know Alex Powers told me that his father was a Freemason. I've heard others say the same thing. But from my research, I've noticed that fraternalism is growing in Africa and the Philippines. Could the growth of these fraternal organizations have their future in the Philippines and Africa and some of the other countries, developing countries? And I've mentioned today that people join these fraternal or friendly societies for financial aid, friendship, you know, fellowship, and so on. You know, with the advent of the welfare state, and you've heard me say this before, and different forms of entertainment, these fraternal organizations have played a reduced role in people's lives and seen a drop in their membership numbers. I'll close with this thought. The welfare state is overextended and stressed almost to the breaking point, to say the least. Could this lead to a reemergence of fraternalism and friendly societies? Time will tell. But these are questions worth exploring, and I guess that's why we're here, isn't it? But I'm afraid we'll just leave it there for now, brothers and sisters. But before we part, I want to mention that Points of Light Radio is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. You can follow Points of Light Radio on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash points of light radio. My Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the link to my Spotify channel as well as my Points of Light store where you can go purchase some of this quality merchandise and represent this great podcast and our journey together. I also want to point out that Points of Light Radio is available to advertise your fraternal store or event. Just get in touch with me via Twitter or Facebook. Next week's guest will be Lyle Azuf. He's the past president of his Elks Lodge, number 11 in Edmonton, Alberta, as well as the past president of the Elks Lodge of Alberta. Until we meet again, brothers and sisters, just step into the light. <laughs>